Well, she was the first person in Chicago to receive the COVID-19 vaccine when it rolled out back in December. Yeah, for more than a year and a half, she's been tracking the data, shining a light on how Latino families are navigating this pandemic. She's now part of a working group meeting with the White House to discuss vaccine outreach. Dr. Marina Del Rios is an emergency physician with the University of Iowa, formerly with UIC. She's joining us now to talk a little bit about this latest vaccine rollout. Hello to you. Nice to see you. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, good evening. You know, you have small kids too, and you had to maneuver your way to get your child a vaccine. And it was interesting. We were talking earlier, and you said pediatricians have been receiving a lot of the doses for distribution. But for the Latino community, you say that's not always the best first place to start. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, the focus has been pediatricians and pharmacies, um, but unfortunately, a lot of Latino families, whether because of lack of insurance or just other difficulties, don't have a, um, a set primary care provider. So a lot of our, our pediatric patients show up in FQHCs or clinics, um, but even then, uh, they don't follow up consistently with a with a primary care provider and I've seen many that show up in my emergency department with even their childhood immunizations behind schedule. So I'm concerned that access to the COVID vaccine is going to be a problem for these families. You're now helping advise the White House on vaccine outrage. What are some of the points that you've been trying to drive home? Well, I think the main point is that this idea of uh, vaccine distribution and asylos, you know, looking at the teenagers separately from the kids, from the adults, is a very artificial one, especially for uh, communities of color. And so in the case of the Latino community, and I think that's true for black communities as well, is that there's a lot of multi-generational families. And so it makes sense to have a one-stop shop for grandma, for the parents, and for the kids to all get vaccinated in the same place at the same time without having to worry about, you know, finding a different provider for every person. That's it. Interesting. That's interesting that you say that. Go into that a little bit more because you say that could be key in many of these Latino neighborhoods that are that are fighting this COVID pandemic. You say that they need to all show up together and that may lead them to to go a lot quicker and continue to do so. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that we've been advocating for is using uh, is, is really leveraging trusted messengers. And so um, for a lot of Latinos, that's our schools. It's, that's uh, the schools are, are the are the center of the community. The Puerto Rican agenda has actually a great um, description of that. It's community is a campus and the campus starts at the school. And so if you have a vaccine based a vaccine clinics based in schools, models that have right now are put in place in New York and in New York. And in fact, I heard that even Elgin um, in, in Illinois is, is setting that up. Um, then you have a chance of not only engaging uh, with the parents to uh, to be able to talk to them about vaccines, but also offer vaccines on the spot for the kids. And then if there's anyone else in the family that might need to get vaccinated, uh, still, there's still some a lot of people out there that mm -hmm. haven't even gotten their first dose oh, yeah. and, and and grandparents are due now for their boosters. And so it's a great opportunity to just get the entire family protected. Real quickly, I'll never forget uh, at the height of the pandemic, Lourdes did yeah. a story with you where you took us inside uh, the emergency room to show us what it was like for doctors and nurses. I know we've had different waves. Uh, how are things looking right now? Well, the emergency departments uh, are still overcrowded. I think that was a reality even pre-pandemic. Uh, thankfully, not, not so much with COVID cases anymore. Um, but, you know, we worry that, that the hospitals are always at the brink of a, of a crisis. Um, you know, people are coming back with chronic medical conditions that hadn't been taken care of for a long time, procedures that had been postponed because we wanted to keep people away from the hospital so they wouldn't be exposed from COVID. And so hospitals are overwhelmed. Mm. And so now that we're heading yeah. into flu season and COVID season, um, and let's face it, now that everyone's indoors, there's a higher risk of uh, infection, we worry that yeah. we're going to get to a point where we're going to have to be making difficult decisions. It'll be interesting to see. All right, emergency physician Dr. Marina Del Rios, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Good okay. to see you again. Hey.